Coming up next week, dead authors we do. <laughs> you almost said the F word. Postmortem. <laughs> authors we would do postmortem. <laughs> Two months in, we're running out of ideas. <laughs> authors, authors we would kill and then do. And then do. Mm. <laughs> but while they still have the warmth of their body on. All right. Oh, God, stop. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our eighth It's Just Brunch. Yes, we've been doing this for two whole months now. Yay. Yeah. So <laughs> thank you, everyone who's been watching and reading our blogs uh, and following us on Facebook and Twitter. We're really excited that we have some people watching, and we hope that you will share us with your friends. Uh, how are you guys doing this morning? Oh, a little tired. <laughs> well, a long night. Um, kind of. It was. It was a good night, but it was, you know, one of those. Oh. Yeah, lots no. of jeopardy. Lots of jeopardy. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm jeopardied out myself as well. How about you, Zachy? I'm. I'm very tired too because Michael and I had a crazy night. Where he played Sim City, and I was looking up RuPaul Drag Race rumors all night, hours. So, just so exhausting, you know. Just like, yeah, like I take it easy today. Have nights like that, you know. I need to, I need to like, you know, spread those nights out because it's that's a lot. Bad. Yeah, it's a lot. So, wow. you know, yeah. So, thank you. <laughs> you know, thanks for asking. So, yeah. all right. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, pretty good. <laughs> Things are going well. Everything's good. Uh, had a good week. Back at work. Um, yeah, so I'm ready ready to brunch it out. Let's do it. What are we brunching some... today? Today, what was that? Is everyone here still? Sorry. Fuck. We've had a lot of technical difficulties this morning, so if any of us disappears, Anonymous got them. Um, <laughs> today we are brunching about... Our author crushes. Ooh, saucy. Yeah, quite saucy indeed. So, yeah, we're going to talk about authors that we find um, attractive, sexy, alluring for one reason or another or for all reasons. So, uh, Colin, you want to start? Well, I'll start by asking you guys a question, um, which is... Dun, dun, dun. Um, when you're reading a book or an article or a magazine or something, um, whether it's fiction or nonfiction or poetry, do you picture do you have an image of the author in mind, and does it make a difference how the author looks to you? For me, sometimes it's not so much a picture of them, but it's their voice. Mm -hmm. And if I if I know the author, it's hard for me not to hear them reading their stuff because you know we have we know a good deal of published authors and because of the MFA program we got to hear them read a lot so like when I was reading Hollis Seaman's book somebody up there hates you all I could hear was her voice which is great because I love when she reads I cry like every time um, but for me it's it's never about their image it's it's about their voice that's what I yeah. I usually can't get out of my mind when I'm reading Zach, what about you? Um, I actually never, ever, ever think about the author when I'm reading. I don't know what it is. I think it's probably, I feel it's probably not a good thing, but I don't, they sort of never cross my mind except, and the only one that I can really think of is Kim Copperman's book, is because I guess it's her, her tone that really, that helped me read that book, that when I was reading that, I just, I got her tone, not her voice, but really her tone, and I think... That's the only one I can really remember, but I think I I don't consciously try to dis disconnect myself from the author, but I think the, I don't know. I think it's important. I mean, we've talked about you know in emails and things about um, kind of authors' liberties when they're writing about certain subjects, and I think that's something to kind of keep in mind. Is that you know if it's a woman writing about a gay man's experience, you know how much experience does she have writing about that? So I think I think it's probably important to keep it in mind there. But I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, 
I, I do see the, the you know the sort of the importance of, of sort of letting the work stand on its own and, and you know not um, not necessarily be shadowed by who the author is or what he or she looks like. I just think in my case, it's almost impossible to do that. You know, if I if there's a picture of the author and there usually is on the jacket flap or on the back cover, um, I have that image of the author in mind even when I'm reading, mm -hmm. um, and I think that um, especially in nonfiction helps to um, humanize the work a little bit more. You know, I can sort of picture this person telling me his or her story, um, and it, it feels more like I'm having a conversation with um, someone um, through text. Um, so, I mean, which is not always fair. I mean, you know, because I think that sometimes, because uh, I'm human, I end up having sometimes unconscious uh, biases, right? right? Because, you know, I uh, it's, let's face it, if the author is hot, um, I'm like, oh, this is a hot author, you know. So who's your crush then? Wait, well, wait, wait! I have something to say about that before we move on, because now that no, sorry, I know because we're gonna get into like the meat of it. But right. you, when I think, when I was reading Joyce Carol Oates' book, the one that I just reviewed, I kept thinking about her face. Mm. I kept seeing her, and you're right; it does humanize it, and it also um, makes you remember that someone wrote it. And maybe that's something that we all do anyway as writers. We can't really read for pleasure anymore because I was constantly thinking of Joyce Carol Oates sitting there and making decisions about every chapter. So, I, yeah, I, I get it. You're actually right. I think maybe perhaps I do think about the author more than I probably let on because I actually do think about that too, that the decisions they make. Because I, th I think, so I, I, yeah, so I was lying. But I think that's, Colin, I think what you said is, is absolutely so true about humanizing. Yeah. yeah, the reason I said that is that... Um, uh, I there's a uh, somebody who's written a book of, of short stories that has been um, critically kind of panned. Oh my god! No, that, no. Uh, I kind no. of want to read just because this person, this someone, is someone um, who I think is just pretty hot. No, 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 you know no, no. Hey, can you guess who it is? I don't know. I'm so nervous. He's also an actor. Um, and um, his name is James Franco. No, <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> Zach, you didn't know about this? No. Oh my God. This is kind of a, an, an important thing. Like this guy uh, is, you know, um, he's got a lot of charisma and he's super hot. Uniqueness, nerve, and talent. Bingo. He's definitely got nerve putting out a fucking <laughs> book of short stories. And I feel like anybody else writing this book would be just laughed out of the room, but he, you know, he gets published and probably sold a bunch. So um, that's my author crush, James. If you're watching, your author crush is James Franco. Don't ju you're so judging me right now? I'm sorry. Oh. He's not an author. Okay, sorry. He's not an author. I guess he is though. I guess he's more of an author than we are right now. Well, we'll get to uh, what makes an author in the next brunch. <laughs> <laughs> On another. <laughs> oh, that's good. I like that. That's another half hour conversation. Yeah. Cut down from an hour. All right. So, who the hell is your crush? Me. Yeah. Judge. Judge Judy over there. Yeah, I am Judge Judy about that. <laughs> I can't believe that. Because <laughs> um, we've talked about you doing somebody else, so I'm just very surprised. In a good way, right. though. That was really funny. Um, yeah. Uh, my my crush is Porchista Kapoor, who has a new book coming out. She's written um, Suns and Other Flammable Objects, and now she has The Last Illusion coming out this week. Um, for me, I you know I had the pleasure of having her as a workshop leader. I really wish I'd gotten to work with her for a semester, but she's just very um, her work is very frank and very not really edgy, but it's it doesn't pull any punches. And she, as a person, is just, like, magnetic, I think, and very fun to follow on social media. And, obviously, I am a social media addict, and I think she is the same, so we see eye to eye on that. And her hair is purple right now. You're so in love with her. Oh, my God. I am so. White so her. <laughs> I, I super like her. So. <laughs> I can't wait to read her book. I'm going to review it as soon as I get my hands on a copy of it. Um, mm, maybe a review copy. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> PK, hook me up. 
So yeah, what about you, Zach? Um, well, first, I also have a question um, that I'd like to throw out there. Um, do you guys judge a book by its author? Like, if um, like I, I guess sort of with James Franco, but I, I was thinking more of someone like David Sedaris or something. When David Sedaris comes out with a book, do you automatically go into that text thinking, all right, I know this is going to be funny, or I know this is going to be, you know, 96% true, I think is what he says. But, um, yeah, so that's my question. What about you, Colin? Yeah, I, th I think you can't help it, especially if the author has a quote-unquote brand, um, which is what everybody says you have to have these days. So if your brand, you know, the brand basically, I think, is is something that tells readers what to expect. So if your brand is uh, Stephen King and, you know, you buy his book, you think, okay, this is going to be some kind of horror suspense or something. Or um, If your brand is... Uh, uh, Davis Darris, it's going to be, you know, humorous essays. So yeah, I do um, pay a lot of attention to who the author is. Less so for, you know, somebody who is not a known or like a first-time, first-time published author. Mm -hmm. um, but even in those cases, like I said earlier, you know, I read the bio and I look at the picture and I just try to get a sense of who this person is because I think like, for me as a reader, that's important. Like, who is this telling me this story? For some reason, I need to know that. Hmm, I, might start, I might start doing that. Yeah. Really, really connect with my craft more. Kate, what about you? Um, I don't know if I, I don't know if I judge them, the books based on the author. I might, I might give a book a little more leeway if I know I'm like the author. If it's stupid or not that good, aka. Um, Harry Potter and the which one was it? Order of the Phoenix. Not very good. What? Um, yeah, that's the one I didn't really like. So that might be my favorite one. Ew, really? I yeah. Wait, is that what? the one you didn't like? You guys are so vehement about it. I'm wondering if that's the one. It, it it's the best one. There's one that drags. I thought it was the fifth one. No, I think it's the third one. No, 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 no. Prisoner of Azkaban is the shit. No, that's the fourth one. No, no, no. no the, Goblet no. of Fire. Goblet of Fire might be the dragger. That's because that one's 900 pages. All right. So, JK, you're on notice for Goblet of Fire. <laughs> That's the one. Um, yeah, I think so. But, yeah, I don't, I don't think I judge. I think, if anything, I, yeah, I give them a little, more, a little more slack if I know them. Mm -hmm. But I do like that idea of, of getting to know the author better. I don't think I do that enough. Hmm. So, I know. That's actually a really cool concept. Yeah. So who's your crush, Zachy? Um, my crush, um, I think, is going to be obvious. Um, as a gay man, um, is actually um, Alison Bechdel, who is a lesbian. Um, and she's absolutely my crush. I love... The, the one I just held up was Are You My Mother, but I've talked about Fun Home before. I, I, that's one of my favorite books. Um, but I just... I like the way that she writes about being gay. I think that's really... I think she writes about it not as a taboo, and I think that's that's really hot to me. <laughs> that reading an author that's not like I'm gay and that's what this book is about. Right. It's not. It's just matter of fact. Part of part of your life. Part of your personality. Right. Well, she's she's also very handsome. She, right. I think she's she has a beautiful face. I love yeah. her. Um, I know. I could have done her as my crush too. Right. I love lesbians though. I love lesbians so. Yeah, that's that's my crush. I just I just love her so much. Learned something about Zach this morning. Yeah, I know. Hey, Zach. <laughs> Michael's actually a woman. You like my plaid? He's a hairy woman. You like my you like my flannel, Zach? I do like oh, your you flannel. You like that? You like that? Can you tell them what I bought you for um, a present? Um, he bought me. <laughs> he bought me a hammer and a gift card to Lowe's. Oh my God! For Christmas. As if he doesn't already have that. I know, right? As if I don't own everything in Lowe's already. <laughs> right. Yeah, she had to give it away, actually, because yeah. she couldn't use it. To a less fortunate lesbian. Or you got more gardening gloves. <laughs> 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 All right, so I have a question. Yeah. What kind of writing do you find sexy? If we're talking about sexy authors. Because for me, it's not about what they look like. It's about, or the, although, that helps. But it's about the way they write. That makes me be like, hey. Um, 
For me, and this is, okay, we were literally just talking about this, is really quiet, um, really, really quiet, like, sexuality. Like, I don't, I don't know. I mean, when there's, I'm trying to think of a good sex scene that I read that was really, got me so going. You like the actual sex scene, that's sexy. Yeah. I mean, if we're talking about, like, sexy, but stuff that I mean, that I find, like, really alluring. Yeah, uh, like when you're like, ooh, this author, I want to have sex with his mind. I actually might keep my answer. I think it might be quiet. I think because I don't write quiet at all, because I don't know how to fucking write quiet, because I'm all, like, in your face about it, that when I can see that someone else is doing something um, that I'm not very good at, that that is so attractive to me, because it's like, oh, how do you do that? How do you control yourself? I have no self-control about writing, so that's, that's me. <laughs> Fact. Well, um, when, it, when I'm not lusting openly after James Franco... Um, <laughs> Yeah, that's a good question, Kate. I, uh, I think, yeah, there are times when I'm attracted to the way an author's mind works, and I think it's really when they're being provocative with ideas, um, a little counterculture. Um, the one that comes immediately to mind is James Baldwin, who, um, if you read The Fire Next Time, uh, it's just, you know, right from the first sentence, it's just mind-blowingly good. And it's kind of sexy. And he is kind of sexy. I, I think I look like him. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a teeny weeny weeny bit. You tried really hard. Yeah. I think you're more Idris Elba, personally. But. Oh, well, I'll take that. Ooh. I'll take Idris. Is he not? <laughs> yeah, right? Who is it? Idris Elba. Google it. God <laughs> damn it. Wait, I know. The guy who is that. What show is that? Luther, right? Maybe it's the. Uh, I don't. I think I know who you're talking about. He's like. He looks like Colin. Right? He looks like Colin. Let me look on the wire. I know that. Was he on the wire? I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we're getting off track here. Doesn't matter. Talking about Idris Elba. Yeah. Oh yeah. No. 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 Right. Yep. Yeah. He's beautiful. Doesn't he look like Colin? Actually, yeah, he kind of does. <laughs> right? wow. Sometimes, like when you smile a certain way, I'm like. Idris. Wow. Okay. Idris, kind of the uh, eyes. Now I'm trying to answer my own question because I can't really. Oh yeah. What do uh, you find sexy? I would say. Pussy talk. What was that? No, go ahead because no I one heard it. <laughs> I, I heard it. <laughs> I said straight up pussy talk. Mm, yep. I, exactly. Um, no. I would. I would say. I would say the ability to build really intense and realistic worlds mm. to me is really sexy because a lot of times I get to a certain point and I pull back because I'm not confident that I can do it. So when I read someone like Gabriel Garcia Marquez and his ability to create generations of families and this this world that sort of has, you know, there's some magical realism to it, and he just goes for it, and it's so dense and so romantic, even if there's no romance happening, and to me, I just, I fall in love with everything he writes, so, I'd do him. <laughs> well, he's dead, so. <laughs> Doesn't matter. My opinion stands. <laughs> no, it doesn't. I'm sorry. I'm that's gross. Oh, you know what a really creepy oh, never mind, I'll talk about that later. Yeah. I think we should probably wrap this up <laughs> on that note. I was about to go on the note of necrophilia. Hard, yeah, I was about to go hard into necrophilia. <laughs> coming up this week. Coming up this week on the blog. Uh tomorrow we will have a writing prompt. That I'll set up. Zach's gonna do. And then on Tuesday. Yeah, I'm going to talk about um, more about lusting openly after uh, dead authors, <laughs> and, um, and 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 talk about how that inspires my writing. <laughs> and on Wednesday, I am going to talk about a writing exercise that my author crush gave me in workshop. Mm. And on Thursday, I'm going to write about. Um, uh, uh, sort of what I talked about today about writing about uh, being gay or having some um, particular trait and not making it the 
the focus of the text. But letting it influence or inform it. Right. Nice. Yeah. And then Friday we might have a book review. No? Oh, no. That's fine. Yeah. Someone will do a book review. I'll do it. All right. Tom's so going to do it. Tom's got a book review on Friday. Yeah. I just read a really good one. Yeah? I, yeah. What is it? What did you read? <laughs> um, it's called Two Eyes Are Never Enough. It's by Sonia Huber. Oh, cool. All right. Really nice I love that title. It's a really nice title. Nice cover, too. Great. Yeah. And then Saturday? Guest blog? No? Yeah, somebody send us a guest blog and we'll publish yeah, it. for Christ's yeah. sake. Do it. Oh, actually, and what else should be happening today is we're going to be unveiling a new template for the website because uh, we, needed a new, we needed a facelift because... Um, being out in the sun during brunch really um, for two whole months. For two whole months, it's just lots of wrinkles. So we gotta yes. tighten up. Check for a, a blog facelift coming at you. It's gonna be good. Right. Well, it might already be happening. Might already be there. Actually, I don't know. I don't know what I did. Right. We'll all wait and see. Yeah. <laughs> right. Zach's in control. We'll let it happen. Control. All right. In the meantime, please like us on Facebook and share us with your friends because we want to reach new people and um, you know look back at our past blogs and share them with people that might be interested. And definitely like us on Twitter. Our numbers are growing, so thank you and welcome to all of our new followers. But we would love to have more. So have a great week. My most is almost done, so that means that we are probably done here. It was good seeing you guys. Good seeing you too. I just love seeing you. I just love seeing things. I love catching up. Yeah. Yeah. We see each other more now than I think we ever did. Right? So. I know. It's so nice. A friendship is growing. A friendship is growing. Like my boner. Okay, well, I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cheers, guys. Have a good week. Cheers. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.